any doubt uh, recording in progress uh, on the questions that uh, or the topics that we covered uh, yesterday yesterday i missed out one thing uh, yesterday when I was, while i was teaching this operators relational operators so we have greater than less than greater than equal to less than equal to equals to and not equal to okay this one i missed out not equals to just opposite of equals Okay, uh, so this one I missed, uh, this one I missed out yesterday, and other than this, um, so Aravind, are you having any doubt on the, any, any of the questions? Yeah, actually, if you look up in the assignment that I submitted, I wasn't able to do the 15th one, where you take input in a particular range is a program take any number between 1 to 5 and print the number of inverse of the number is greater than 5 it should print the number is greater than five. oh it was oh okay uh, okay got it if it is greater than 5 okay i thought uh, the condition here was taking the input itself within a particular range okay makes sense Okay, uh, here you have to use this multiple if else condition. Yeah. To do this. Okay. Let's start the recording. Okay. So, uh, today, guys, we are going to see. Um, yesterday, we finished with uh, if else block. Danish, if uh, sorry block. to interrupt. So, you, you've put hashes on one of the answers. In my assignment two, so hmm. what does that mean? I mean, anything specific about that? Uh, let me open assignment day two corrected. Yeah, that one, the the first one. Yeah, so this is what I was expecting here. Uh, uh to get it clear, I mean, to swap two numbers. A comma B equals B comma A. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. I think I made a mistake. Yeah. Uh, that's that's all I, well fine. Yeah. yeah. I understood the rest of the questions. Maybe I did a mistake in that. So some simple uh -huh, mistake. Yes. Okay. So, Got it, Thank you. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, day two, this one, day three. <laughs> now, uh, we saw there's something called uh, you can write if else uh, not if else like for example uh, let's say Let me do this. Five. Let's say the time is Seventeen. Zero. Or you can see seventeen. Or so, uh, let's take any number. Suppose five p.m. I'm just giving five here. Uh, Danish. So, uh, just one question. Yeah. So, uh, sorry, just. This goes back to the assignment. Uh, so mm -hmm. taking number between one to five, and how do you print that number converted into words? 
this is just hard coding uh, this. Uh, it's hard coding this. I will show you this assignment submitted. Uh, so in this. So this is the question, right? Oh, okay. Okay, got it. I, I was thinking uh, in a different way. Okay, makes sense. Okay. <clears throat> uh, so let's go back. So let's say there's some rule, you know, if the time is five o'clock, then, then they will allow you to do a transaction. So we can declare when we will here allow equals to yes. If time equals to equals to, or time less than equals to five. Else. Else we will say no. Time less than five allow this. If it is not less than five, then assign it a uh, no. This is also a variable, a string variable. So in this, what we are going like whenever we have you know an a single like if you want to assign some variable uh, value to a variable depending on some condition that is only a, like uh, a one liner condition we can so we or if we have only you know one one statement in uh, this inside if block or else we are just we just want to. Uh, give some value to this particular variable. Okay, so this way also we can use if else. For example, uh, allow is a variable here that will be assigned the value of yes if time is less than equal to five. Else, it will be assigned the value of no. So uh, we have given five. So uh, it is a, it is the value as you can see in the output. It is showing as yes. But if suppose if I give less than five, uh, greater than five, for example, eight. Uh, so the value of allow will be no in that case. Okay, so if you have a, some, if you face some scenario where you need to do something similar to this, then you can uh, use it, uh, use if else like this also. Okay. You can say that, you know, um, in line if else something like this so is, is this statement clear again how we are assigning a value to this variable based on some condition so can it have Any? multiple elif or something like that no, it cannot have multiple elif because uh, so if uh, this is there, uh, because again you have to give a condition, it may have, let's try out, uh, elif time equals to, equals to, for example, eight. Okay. But the problem will be, you can have only two values. Yes or no? Because we are assigning uh, 
because we can see we are assigning the value elif time equals to eight then where would you give this value for example after else we are giving the value of no right which will sit here in the place of allow yes in the place of yes if it is less than five yes giving it a value of no but here where are you going to give the value uh elif time equals to eight and then we don't have an option right we cannot give like suppose uh like this elif okay let's see yeah what let's i was see. thinking is not in this particular mm -hmm. example say in a different scenario where we would use if elif elif and then else or something like that would we do can we do that in us like one liner like this or uh -huh. no like that uh let's see if this is running then i think we can do in a one liner like this okay if this is not running wait a moment no expected else after if so in, in case of one liner we only have this else option we don't have this elif option okay okay we only have this else option so Danish, we use this only when we have two results, right? Yes, correct. Only two results, then we use this inline defense. Okay. Two results and only uh, it can be either this or this in the, those kind of scenarios. Two. Okay, got it, got it, Danish. Okay. This was one thing. Second thing is... Um, for example, here if time is greater than five, or uh, yesterday's assignment day two, yep. so in this kind of scenario, write a program to take number as input and check whether it's a multiple of five and not equals to fifty. Okay. So multiple of five and not equals to fifty. If we go here, multiple of five. Which number thirteen is it? Uh, yeah, this one. Mm -hmm. Which question was this? Fourteen, no fourteen, yeah. So in this C, uh, so multiple of five, we are just using this quotient operator to check, and not equals to fifty. So both we are doing in the same line using this and operator. Okay, same thing can be done in this way also. If number, for example, let's take this as number. I'm using this value. Let's declare it here. So it's number multiple of five. If the number mod five equals to equals to zero. So instead of using and we are using nested if here. and if number not equals to 50 i think then we can print it print number is multiple of five and not equal to 50 okay uh, and you can have an else block here so uh, if it enters this else block then what will be the case guys number will be number will be multiple of five uh, so if it is not equal to 50 right or uh, not equal to 50, this 
for example, let's cha uh, change the question. And let's make this question as check. Check if number is multiple of five and I'm changing the condition okay and uh, equals to 50. This is what we have to check. So instead of not equal to, I will give here equal to. So if it is a multiple of five, this will it will enter this block. Again, if this is equal to 50, it will enter this block. Else, uh, it will enter this block. Number will be multi number is a multiple of five, but not equal to fifty. This is I'm just showing you. We can have you know an if is block inside an if. Okay, and let's come to the outside. Uh, if uh, if it is not a multiple of five, then print number is not a multiple of five. So is this clear? It's way of writing. Uh, like we can have uh. Mm, if else inside an if also multiple if else block again inside this if you can have another if else if you want in this way we can have multiple if else inside uh, if else So, uh, is this clear again? How, how do we write this nested apples? Only thing is, you have to uh, keep make a note of the indentation. For example, this nested if so, else we should be also start from the same place. You should have you should maintain the same space. This should be uniform across your program. Okay, so this uh, this if uh, so from this indentation, you can find out which else belongs to which which if. Uh, is this clear, guys? Anyone having any doubt on this? So, if we run this number, is a multiple of 5, but not equals to 50. Where number is 10 here. And guys, uh, uh, is it okay? Can you move to the next topic? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, that uh, Okay. So, if else this condition checking we have covered in line if nested if else. Okay. Now we'll just start with loops. So loops uh read and use in while and for loop. For example, let's say we have something of uh, value while. So how does this while look like? We have this while keyword, and then you give some condition here. Okay. File condition is while this condition is true, and then we write here do something. Here also, it should maintain this indentation. Okay, uh, do something, and then you have to. Change the condition. So, 
let's say you have a problem statement where you want to print one two ten okay so you have two options of printing one to ten either you do like this print one print two you can do this ten times or suppose you have to print one to hundred then you have to do it hundred times hundred print statements okay so instead of doing this uh what we can do or even if it is not hundred print statement, then you have to give like one comma two comma three comma four till hundred. Okay. So instead of this, what we can do, we can use while while loop in the, these scenarios. Okay. So how will this while loop work? Danish, uh, sorry, I didn't get this. Could you repeat it from the beginning, please? Ah, sure. Uh, it will be clear once I give this example. Okay. I just okay. Uh, be clear. So, so let's take a variable i equals to one. Okay. Now I want to print uh, suppose one to ten. So this while loop starts with this while keyword and with some condition here. Okay. So what is the condition here? Uh, I want to print 1 to 10, suppose, okay. So, while i is less than 11, this is the condition. Okay, so it will first, uh, it will initialize i1. It will check here, is i, or oh, i is 1. So, 1 less than 11, true, okay. So, it will enter this while, while loop. Okay, after entering, it is going to print i okay and then it is going to increase the value of i by one okay so this is what i mentioned here in this uh so uh, even if you can print you know if you want to print one to hundred then you just have to change the condition here one zero one and this will work fine okay uh if you have to do this without a loop then you have to write one two hundred like manually here with print statement okay that is a very tedious task for that only for doing any repeated things we use loops okay and this is the general syntax of while loop so if we run this Let's make it 11 only. Right. So we are getting this output 1 to 10. Okay, this is the general syntax of while loop. Uh, any doubt now, Evan? Oh, no, I'm good. No, no, Danish, I got it. Okay. So, <clears throat> what will happen, guys, if I don't give this, change this value of i? It is going to run into an infinite loop. Correct, because the value of i will always be 1 and it will always be less than 11, right? So, if I run this, see this? I have to forcefully stop this. Otherwise, it will keep on printing. Control C, why this is not working. I have to manually terminate this. Control C. So whenever you get to see this, your Control C keyboard interrupt should work. Why is this not working for me today? Okay. Uh, let me close this. Cannot. Fine. Uh, it's still running. So this is, uh, you know, 
my laptop's fan is running at a very high speed after running this program. <laughs> but if something goes infinite, now it will take some memory and also it will have some this impact. Okay. Uh, so this is the thing. Okay. Now, uh, we should not miss this uh, updating the condition. Otherwise, it will run into an infinite loop. Okay. So this is one thing. And inside this, uh, we can have some conditions also, like uh, suppose uh, our we have to do something like this. Okay. Mm. Find the sum of the numbers given as input by user okay. so you can take multiple inputs until the user in zero okay so in this kind of problem what you need to do you have to run an infinite loop okay so if i mention something like this while true okay this value of true will always be true okay it will not change it will run into an infinite loop so what uh, the user has to enter a number input and it will uh, Let's declare another variable called sum. This so sum is a built-in keyword. We cannot use sum. Uh, let's say we have. Let's make it as result. So we get result plus equals to number. Uh, but before that, we have to check this condition, right? If number if number is not equal to zero, then we have to do this. Else, what we need to do? We need to not equal to zero else we have to break so what break will do guys uh, break will exit from the loop okay and finally outside this loop we will print the result Uh, so is this clear guys how we are doing this do you think I need to change anything here or it should work fine let's try to run this
enter the number to add plus 0 to it. Last time giving 43. But I'm getting some error. Unsupported operand type for plus equals to intent string. So why I'm getting this error, guys? Anyone? Uh, so result is an integer. Uh, result is an integer. And then number is a string. Right. So we have to convert this to an int. Okay. We save this. Run this. Enter the number to add 23. Enter the number to add again 23. 2, 5, 0. Okay, so some of the numbers is uh, 53. Is that clear, guys, how we are running an infinite loop? <coughs> Sorry. And uh, you are taking input from the user and we are finding the sum. Okay, so this was the break statement. So similar to break, uh, we have something called continue. So if we have, uh, let's suppose i equals to 3 and j equals to 5. So we have some condition. But before that, uh, so we saw here how to print 1, 2, 10, okay. Now suppose we have a condition where I need to print uh, 10 to 1 in reverse order. Like starting from 10, 9, 8, 7, okay, using y. Using y loop. So how are you going to do this things? Like we saw here in this program. How we are printing 1 to 10. Now I want to print 10 to 1. So what shall I mention uh, here in this while? Anyone uh, wants to help me out? So here you want i to be like the variable to be set as 1 or can we set it as 10 or 11 and then decrement it? Anything, any, anything is fine, whatever you're comfortable with. Yeah, yeah, we can set i to be 10 and then... Okay. And what shall be the condition here? Uh, I is greater than uh, zero. Okay. And I. I minus or equals to ten. And minus equals to eleven. Eleven. Is it? Eleven. Yeah. Oh, no, minus or equals to 10. Minus equals to 10. So what? Okay. 1. Oh, 1. Oh, fuck. Sorry. Should be 1, right? Because we are just incrementing yeah. it by 1. Okay. So now we are printing in reverse order. Okay. So just by changing the initial value and the condition, we can do like this also. So uh, we saw in the previous program the use of break. 
it will exit. So why in a most loop? Because if we have multiple loops, we can have a while inside a while. Okay. So if we use break in those scenarios, for example, in uh, let's say we have this while i greater than zero, or let's take another example, a comma b. Okay. A comma b equals to. Three comma five, and in this we have one line oh, while loop. While a is greater than zero, this is one loop. Inside this we have another loop. Just checking why b is greater than zero. And here we are printing a comma b. Okay, and after printing, I will decrease the count of b by one. And so while loop is done, and here I'm going to decrease the value of a by one or yeah a by one okay so if i run this so initially it is printing three comma five okay so initially uh Uh, we have a greater than zero it's true it will come here b greater than zero true print a comma b okay so the value of a is three first so three uh it is going to print how many times like uh, uh three and then the value of b is five right three comma five and then it will it is reducing the value of b by one so three comma four three comma three three comma two three comma one okay till one it will print so the value of b is now zero so it will come here and then it will see okay then it will after this statement this while loop is completed it will reduce the value of a by two so now the value of a will be while a greater than zero it's true it's uh, yeah but when when it will check this condition it will see that the value of b is zero so it will not enter this so here basically uh i just wanted to show here that we can have nested loops also this while inside a while okay uh, how this iteration will happen that we will see uh in some time how this uh, values are getting changed here so what I mean to say is if we have a break here in this, okay. And let's say we have a print statement here in the outer outer while loop. So in this case, what is going to happen? It will check initially, okay, this is true. It will enter this. Again, this is true. Okay, it will enter this. As soon as it enters here, it's, going, it's, it's you know, it's a break that it is coming out of this loop. And it's printing A. Okay, so if I run this, how many values are getting printed? Let me do one thing, comment out somewhere. And now we have only this okay so it will come out uh as soon as it enters this true come out uh decrease the value of a by one so a will be two it will print two okay so after printing two it will check two is greater than zero yes b is greater than zero yes because it has not entered this 
again break. So again, it will decrease the value of A by to one and it will print one. Okay. And again, it will check here one is greater than zero, true. B greater than zero, true. Break, decrease the value, print A. So it is going to print uh, like initially it will print two, then one, then zero. Okay. Two one. Uh, yes i've got a question so if i if we, what happens if we write while a greater than zero and b greater than zero and continue with the rest while a greater than zero and b greater than zero yeah uh, okay let's put it here while this is a, this is like condition checking. Initially, only we are checking these two conditions. Okay, while okay. a greater than zero and b greater than zero. Okay, but in this case, this will not be a nested while loop like what we are having here. Okay. So we can print here a comma b, and then decrease the value of both a minus equals to one and b minus equals to one. Okay, so but yeah. this is this will not be a nested loop. So I just wanted to show that inside nested loop, if we have a break statement, it will ex exit from the innermost loop. So this is the innermost oh. loop. Okay. okay, but the outer loop is getting continued. You see, this value is two one zero. These are yeah. part of outer loop only. Okay. 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 Thank you. And. Uh, continue, what continue will do? Uh, so this no, no. Was in... uh, I mean, yeah. I meant if we go ahead with the rest of the steps, that's what I mean, not the continue statement. My doubt uh, is clarified. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure, sure. I, uh, I was talking about this continue. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry. Okay. Uh, so this can Anish, before you go to continue one question yeah so in the previous case uh so when i was asking uh, can i initialize is 10 or 11 and you said i can keep yes. it uh, anything that i wanted so say if you had to approach it in a different uh like with a different approach would you change the arithmetic operation or the values or how would you approach it if you have to print it that way like inverse 10 to 1 yeah. So this approach is fine. Uh, it's, it's good enough. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Just trying to understand if you have to yeah. like work around. Basically, in these type of situations, is the arithmetic operator uh, like say you can keep it as one and then multiplied by ten, something like that, or uh, those kind of uh, those kind of things also you can do those kind of things also for example uh 10 to 1 right in this scenario they can be uh you know multiple ways of doing the same thing uh but the uh my main objective of showing that was just to show you guys that we can do a minus also here like the reverse way but if you want you okay. can do it as you mentioned right multiplications so suppose if you have a value of i as one here. I just wanted to see how you would do it in a different way. Oh, sure. So we can have something like, um, oh, we have to do 10 times. That is our main objective. Okay, 10 count is zero. We have to do it 10 times using this. So, actually, in real time, uh, we rarely use this while loop. Basically, we go with the for loop only. While count greater than, let's call it only uh, one. While count greater than 11. No, less than 11. Sorry. While count less than 11. Uh, what we can do, so let's make this as uh, 10, 
and we can print i into count if we do this when in your first time one into ten will give you ten uh next time the value of i should be we should decrease the value of i and then increase the value of count no this is going to be an hospital thing or in this way so in this if we do this i into count so initially count will be one then it will be two then it will be three but the value of i should be constant then or better or, uh we start or with maybe that. have another condition in while oh, no, while no, count is less than 11 and i is greater than zero something like that no uh no, that will make it a little bit more um, complicated. So let's do the reverse way only. Uh, this while count greater less than greater than zero. I let's make it I as one. So print I into count once, and then here if we decrease the value of count by one. So, uh, yep, i is constant 1, only the value of count is changing. So, initially count is 10, so 1 into 10 gives you 10, then count is 9, 1 into 9 will give you 9. So, this, this way I think also uh, this should work. Let's try this out. Okay. Yeah, this in this in this way also you can afford. There can be many more ways also. Okay, but that is not. Uh, yeah, it's better to try with different ways. But with while loop, uh, I think we don't get that many scenarios to do. Okay, we'll see okay. for other cases where we have multiple options to do it. Fine. Uh, so coming back to this thing, continue right. So let's see continue here. Okay. Uh. Continue, 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 continue. So, what continue does not, for example, here if I have another, I want to print the value of uh, count also each time. Value of count is value of count is this. So uh, for each iteration, I'm going to print the value of count also. So if you run this, see we are saying value of count is 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, value of count is 0. But if we have a continue statement here before this printing thing, okay? And if we run this, so it is not printing anything what we what was prevent printing previously. So what is happening here? So break what break if I put a break here, it will immediately come out of this uh, loop. Okay. Uh, but if we give continue here, what it will do? It will ignore the statement that is defined after it. It will ignore this print statement directly. It will go to the next uh, iteration. Okay. Whatever statements we declare after continue that will be ignored and it the next it will continue with the next iteration that is the uh, that is how continue behaves okay it will skip the statements uh, after it uh, it will skip the statements Uh, like uh, after the line where it is declared, I 
and continue with the next iteration. Yeah, is this clear guys the use of uh, how we use continue and break? Yes, that is. Okay. So now, uh, so this is how continue behaves. Uh, now this so why that is one question. Yeah. So, so you said everything after continue would be ignored. Yes. Then which is inside the why, loop? Okay. Which, which is inside, inside the loop. loop. Hmm. Okay. Then so why have would we have there? something? Hmm. Tell me, tell me. So, so uh, why would we have something inside the loop after continue? Uh, so. So based on some condition, now here I just gave a simple statement here. Okay, uh, there might be scenarios, you know, where, uh, for example, if I am giving a condition here. Okay, if count uh, equals to equals to five. Okay, then only do this continue. So I want to print all the values of count except five. Okay. Okay. So in this scenario, what will happen if it is seeing it's equals to five, then it will not it will not execute this statement. But for all all the values which are not equal to five, it is going to uh, print this statement. So in these kind okay. of scenarios, mm -hmm. you can use continue because why? unnecessary if you don't want uh, these statements to be executed based on some condition then we can use continue in that case okay yeah okay. makes sense yeah so here you see five it did not printed value of count is five okay so okay. this is how uh, this works uh, so this was all about while loops so we have something similar to this in for loop. So let's say I want to print one to ten using for loop. Okay. So we have the statement for i. I can be any variable. I, J, A, B, C, anything, okay. Uh -huh. For A, N, we use this range function with follow, okay. Range function, starting value, example is starting with the one, okay. And our, we want to print till uh, 10, so we have to give 11. Because it will exclude this 11 second index. So here the uh, so this is the range function. Side range function it can take three parameters. And you can see it. Uh, and first one will be starting value or beginning value, anything you can see. Okay. Uh, if you don't, uh, so this is inclusive. Okay, this it will include. It will be included. And we have something called uh, stopping value or ending value, anything you can see. And this will be excluded it will not be it will be, this 11 will be ex ex excluded it will print before that before it till before 11 okay so if i mention here print a
Uh, let me run this. It is going to print one, two, ten. So it included this beginning value, okay, one, but it uh, ignored this eleventh. It it printed till ten, okay, and we have something called step value. These three parameters we can give inside range function. So by default, if you don't give any value for step, it will take it as one. So in this case, the default value is one. Okay, we can give it two also. So if we give two, the step value is two, then you will see the output would be one plus step value, that is three, again, plus two, five, seven, nine. But if we don't give anything, it will take it as one. Uh, okay, uh, so and uh, among between these three uh, parameters, uh, you can say that this stop value is mandatory. You can, uh, we can beginning value is also optional. Okay, so I'll mention here beginning value is beginning value and step value. Are optional in range function. Okay, suppose I remove this uh, one also beginning value. I have given only the stopping value eleven, but this uh, stop value or end value is uh, mandatory. So if I print this, and by default, if you don't give any value, like the step value default is one, right? So beginning value included the default value. If you don't give any value, default value will be zero. Okay, so if we run this, you see it will start with zero. Because we are not mentioning any starting value, we have this is the only stopping value where it is where it will exclude this, it will end before this. So, is this clear? Yes, do you have any doubt here in this? No, that is clear. Okay, so what? Uh, yeah, so if in this case, if you want to print in the reverse order, like what we saw there, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, what we can do here, uh, we can give a starting value as 10, okay, and the stop value as 0, so that we go till 1, and step value will give us minus 1. Okay, 10. So if we run this, it is giving me the thing in reverse order. What if, if we give here 0 starting value and 10 as ending value and a minus 1? So in this case, what is going to happen, guys? We are getting no output, it's a blank. Why is it? Because this start this whenever we give a minus one as step value negative index, then my beginning value starting value should be greater than the stopping value. Okay, whenever we have a negative index. Same case, for example, if I want if I want to print in this reverse order. And if I give a positive index here, 
uh, step value as positive then also it is printing nothing why because when it will be positive then my starting value should be greater than the ending value and when it is negative then uh, my beginning uh, value should be uh, sorry am i confusing here it i'll just write it down to be clear mm -hmm. when the step value is positive then starting value should be starting value should be less than ending value okay. and when the step value is negative the starting value should be uh, greater than the ending value yeah now it is clear so i hope i hope this is clear again so what difference is saw between this for loop and while loop So basically, the operator could be within, like, it can be specified as the step here, and there you would have to manually do it, is it? Yes, so in case of a while loop, what we are doing, we have to, you know, check for the condition. If we forget to update the condition, then it is running into an infinite loop. But in case of for loop, that infinite loop is, you know, uh, that is, we we are, you know, carefree in, in terms of that, that, uh, that the condition should be correct, otherwise it will go into an infinite loop. If we give some conditions which are just uh, inverse, reverse, simply it will not print it. But it will not go into an infinite loop. Okay, that is one thing. Second thing you saw, uh, in case of while, we can do these kind of scenarios. Uh, where is this? Not this one. While true. Okay. You can run into an infinite loop and then you can take input from the user and exit based on some input from the user. So this also you can do it with while loop. But that is very difficult to do with uh, for loop. Okay, these two important difference we have between while and for loop. Uh, sorry, can you repeat the second one? Uh, second, in case of scenarios like this, where is this scenario? Find the sum of all numbers given by the user. You can take multi until the user enters zero. Okay, so what we are doing here, we are intentionally, we are creating an infinite loop here. Okay. Right, intentionally we're creating because we we have this kind of uh, scenario to do. Okay, this this is very difficult to achieve with for loop. What we achieved here, this in with while loop. Okay, but uh, so yes. you said uh, in for uh, the chances of getting into an infinite loop is not as it is in while loop, but still in for can yes. we run into infinite loops? It can run into infinite loop, but it is uh, it, it has we have to do something special for that because you, by giving any condition in this range with this range, okay, with this range, it is uh, it could be very uh, difficult to because if you give any value here, it, it won't run into infinite loop, it will just give you a blank value, like it will not print any output. That's it. But it won't be entering into infinite loop. Okay, but say if it is not a range here and if it is something else, mm. something else in the sense uh, a different operation, uh, not using range, but another for loop. Yeah, Would but that... uh, 
No, that will also not move it. Uh, the thing which will move it into an infinite loop, uh, we have not studied that. Okay. 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 So once we cover that, then I can show you one like uh, how it will run into an infinite loop with this. Okay. Fine, so this was this, and for a, and this is this, for a in the range of 10. Or b in the range of, three here, or in the range of, Print a comma b. Let's make it three and two. Let's make it simple. Okay, so what would be the output here in this? We are using running a nested for loop and we are printing the values. What will be the output here? Uh, three comma two and two comma one, and I think it will stop there. Okay. Uh, okay. So initially, what will happen here? The value of a is zero, right by default. Right. Yeah. If you start the oh, okay. Zero. And again, it will come to B and it will see here B is also equal to zero. Okay, so it will print zero comma zero first. Okay, okay. And then what will happen? It printed zero comma zero again. It will go to this loop in a in a loop. So initially b was 0, then for the second iteration, the value of b will be 1, right? So here, it would be 0, 1. Again, it will go to this, after printing this, it will go here, it will see 2 is a stopping value. So this, this b is exhausted, okay? All the values 0, 1, we have used. Again, it will go, then it will go to the outer loop. So initially outer loop was zero. The value of A was zero. Now the value of A will be one. Okay. And again, when it will execute this statement, again, it will make, uh, it will start the B value of B will be zero. Fresh. Okay. Then the output will be one comma zero and one comma one. Again, B will be exhausted. Again, it will go back to A. It will see that, okay, now the value of A will be 2. Okay, again, it will come back to B. It will say, okay, B in the range of 2. That means 0 and 1. There are two options here. So, you will get an output like this. Okay. So, initially A is 0. For A, is, when A is 0 initially, it will run the entire B, that is 0 and 1 here. Okay. Then again, it will go to A. A is 1 now. Again, it will run the entire B. So for each iteration in the outer loop, it will execute the entire inner loop. Okay, if I run this, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 2, 0, 2, 1. Okay. This you can, uh, so is this clear, guys? Any doubt here? No, I'm good. What I was thinking initially was I thought mm. once it exits the like the inner loop, I thought the value of B would be set to 1 and it won't go back to 0 when it comes to the main loop. But uh, mm. okay, now it is uh, clear. Uh -huh. it, will, uh, it will again, this is like a new fresh initialization again. 
again it will start from beginning for the inner loop okay okay so whenever the outer loop gets updated the inner loop restarts is it like that yes correct you can it's kind of restart yes okay okay you can understand this uh, in if i if i run the same thing in uh, pycharm okay uh let me open this project uh, we are in day three right okay day three folder let me open this and this is what we are checking now by steps for loop uh, let me see if I can uh, increase the font here settings. Is, is this visible, guys? Is it too small for a so... Yes. This is the main code that we are writing here. Okay. And i am just giving this this is a debug point here i just clicked on this line number debug point okay uh i want to run it via debug okay you, you see this option debug let me debug this so once i debug this it will the point where i have given this debug point right print a comma b you can see it in this you see this value of a is zero b is zero here or you can also see it uh, here only. You see A0, B0, these two values. Yeah. Right. So this is for the first iteration. Okay. Now, here you have these options. You see step over, step into, uh, and step out. Okay. So if I do a step over, so it will just continue with the next statement. Okay, so I'm clicking on the step over here. So it will go to B. See, I told you now it will print and it will go to B. Okay. Uh, again, the next. Now you see the value of B becomes 1. Here, B is 1. A is 0, but B is 1. You see, A is 0, B 1. Okay. Now, again, if we do a step over, now it will see that B is exhausted. It will go to A back. Now it will see, okay, the value of A was 0. Now it will make the value of A as 1. Okay. And when this statement will be executed for B in the range of 2, you will see the value of B again become 0, 1, 0. Okay, got it. Okay. So this way it is happening. Now, I don't want to run, uh, I want to just run the code in a normal thing. So, here we have the option on the left hand side resume program. I will click here and it will just uh, uh, continue with the next thing. So, let me remove this debug point now and run it. So, this is the output we are getting 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 2, 0, 2, 1. Okay. So I just wanted to show in the hair because hair debugging is uh, much more easier and very simple to do in this uh, in uh, PyCharm. Okay, guys. <clears throat> so uh, this was the thing. You can also, guys, you, you guys can also download PyCharm from their official website. Uh, I think uh, PyCharm, if you type PyCharm, it will take you here, uh, JetBrains and this is for professional we don't want professional we want a community edition okay full flesh professional or free community so if i click on download here so so here you see we have two options if i click on download professional and community okay so this is a professional will be a trial so you don't do this just uh, download this community one okay so once you download this uh it is already installed for me so it won't help me much so once you download this guys and you can install it like any other software okay uh 
and after uh, install after this is installed you can just directly launch by jump from your mm, just typing here it will get a shortcut also for you so initially you might uh, get uh, you initially you have to go to this uh, settings and uh, like once you create a new project go to your settings and uh, where is that? Yeah, and you will see that this is my project name, project day three. Okay, you click here. Initially, uh, at the very first time when you install it is Python interpreter. Now you have to set some value for this Python interpreter. By default, they will give you some value. Okay, but what you do? Uh, because sometimes that their default settings will not work. So you already have a Python installed in your system. So you just have to give uh uh your path add local interpreter so this is my local systems path where my python is installed so you can also give your path and then then hit on okay and uh, apply this and okay and then what happened why it is not now cancel yeah uh, and then you can just just right click and run your programs like this okay run you will get there an option here if you want to debug you will get a debug option here okay in this way also you can do okay so back to our this but uh, for beginners uh this one what we call this idol is the best way to uh, start with that is why i always start my curriculum with this idol very simple and easy to use and uh, a good interface okay so uh this was nested for loop that we saw so what have we covered we covered the uh, while loop for loop break and continue in finite loop okay so till this point we are good uh now let me start with I think any these are the basic building blocks that we covered if else now we'll see uh, about lists uh, Danish one question yeah so now we saw while and for loops so when yes. you're working on a problem how would you uh, identify which one to use so we will uh, ninety nine percent of the cases will go with for loop only. Okay, because while loop is little bit uh, like depends on the scenario. For example, as I told you, uh, in this kind of scenario, this kind of questions where you have to create an infinite loop and then you have to run through it until you encounter something, you will use a while loop. Okay. Okay, you will use a while loop. Otherwise, you are uh, for any other problem you are good with. You can use for loop and continue. Okay, yeah, got it. Okay, <laughs> so coming back to this uh, list. So list is basically you know a collection of. collection of elements that can be of any data type okay uh, in the case of arrays uh, this is also a collection of elements but of the same uh, all the elements should be of the same data type. Okay, so we can have uh, so arrays are not uh, inbuilt in uh, Python, okay. Arrays are not inbuilt in Python. Like we have to import it. 
to use that is okay. But list are available by default. Okay. So let's we have a list. So we have here a list of numbers. 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 54 comma 6 or string values sam floating values when you see points of difference if you see the if you print this we have this values one two three four five if you want to um, iterate over a list using for loop what you can do you just mention for element in lst uh, print element so it will just iterate over that list all the elements and it will print each element Okay, so depending on um, depending on what kind of scenarios we are, we have to see like which data type we will use. Uh, either we will use list or we will use uh, some string or float or other data like tuple set. So that will depend on what are you trying to, uh, what kind of problem you are trying to solve. So if you see the type, this belongs to class list. Okay. So uh, each class will have some methods. But before going to methods, so uh, before going to methods, let's see this. Uh, if I want to print only the, so list is ordered. Uh, so list is ordered collection of elements, not only the ordered ID ordered so what do you mean by ordered is so we have declared the list in this okay in this way one uh the order will be maintained like initially one is present then two is present then three is present then 54. so this uh, order it will be maintained and we can access individual element using something called index okay so Okay, and if, uh, so in this case, uh, we have elements like one, two, three, three, four, six. Then we have Sam, we have this floating point number. Okay. So these are the elements these are the elements so these are the elements and their uh, index, index so index starts with zero okay the first element will be at index zero the second element will be at index one the third element will be at index two the fourth element will be at index three. The fifth element will be at index four. So in this way, index will uh, work. It will start from zero. Okay. So if you want to print the first element, so how can we print it? Using index, that is list of zero. This will give you the first element. So if I print this,
to give some strength. Mm -hmm. This first element is one. Okay. If I want to print the second element, I will give the uh, index value as one. So this is the second element. Okay. If we so here, if we see, uh, we have elemental index position six. Okay. So if we give an index of seven, there is no such element present. Okay. So in this case, you will get an exception. Uh, and this is a very common exception. You they ask the interviews also. If you want to, you know, if you've given an index which is not uh, out, uh, present in this list, so what kind of exceptions you will get? Okay. So this is a very common exception that they ask that is list index out of range. Okay, uh, this figure when we try to access uh, element at an index that there is no such element present in that it is ending here only, so we are getting this. So, is this clear, guys? How we declare a list and how we access individual elements? Is this clear? Yes, sir. So this this was positive index. Okay, we have here something called negative index as well, where it starts from here, like from the reverse minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, minus five, minus six, and a minus seven. Okay. So if I do a list name of the list that is LST and a minus seven. So minus seven is pointing to the first element one. Okay. So if I print this, let me make it as first element. So it is one. Okay. So if I give here a minus one guys, then what will be the output? <laughs> minus one model with output guys Six. so these are the values that we have in this twenty three point six five correct twenty three point six five so if I run this 23.6. Okay, so we can either access it via its uh, positive index or with negative index, depending on the scenario or our choice. Okay, so zero is always the one on the leftmost, and yes. minus one is on the right. Correct. Okay, guys. Uh, is I'm stopping here today. I'm not feeling well. I uh, will uh, continue with uh, the with this list uh, in tomorrow's class as well. Okay? okay. So, do you guys have any uh, doubt on the topic that we have covered so far? Yeah. Uh, in today's, uh, like you yes. talked about array. So, why would we import and use array when we have list? Python? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, generally, uh, due to this, uh, in array, the elements are of the same data type. Okay. So, what happens there now? So, uh, that is in some of the, in few cases, operations in arrays are uh, um, what do we call are faster as compared to lists uh, okay. because uh, 
because in inside list you know they can be uh, different data types like it can be a nested list as well here okay there can be a nested list a list inside list or they can be some tuples here so while processing this for example if you are searching for a number uh, in this list okay so it has to you know go, uh, search here again it has to search in that nested list so this makes it a little, little bit slower as compared to arrays so in those cases arrays are faster as compared to lists but uh, mostly okay. uh, mostly you will use list only but uh, we have this module called numpy okay so numpy is also built on array okay we have numpy.array uh basically that is for you know scientific calculations and all so they're also uh, to make things very uh, faster they will use uh, array there in numpy okay but uh, say you have one specific data type in a list would it be considered similar to an array yes then the, in that case it will be considered similar to array okay and in, so you so how would the initialize like how would you define it if it's an array would you define it in a little different manner than a list is it yeah so for array now we have what we have to do first we have to import this array module you have to import this array module and after importing this you have to create an array like this array dot uh, array dot array i think this is the syntax one comma two comma three comma four let's see this so this will be the way you will you know uh, declare this uh, arrays type analytics oh and you have to give the i think a data type also d type also we have to give uh, for example d type equals to int or float so in this way uh we have to declare it we'll see it uh okay once we are done with this when we are seeing how do we import modules then we will see the examples for array also how are we doing it okay 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 uh so right now it's giving some uh error is it uh, arrays um... we'll see it uh, no problem we'll see it in the upcoming classes how, how we do this okay yeah okay anyway, uh any other question guys uh, yeah, one thing. Uh, so, when do you typically post assignments, Danish? Is it immediately after the class or? Uh, uh, the, within, uh, before 12, uh, the assignments are all in place. Assignments and these notes. Okay. Yeah, if you could post the assignments a bit earlier, that would be helpful. Yeah, sure. Sure. Uh, then, uh, today I will post it just uh, within 15, 20 minutes. I will post the assignments. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Okay, any other doubt, guys? No, then. Okay. Then, yeah, thank you, guys. Thank you for your time. See you guys tomorrow. Bye. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.